FM Radio for the Agile Community. www.agile.fm My guest on Agile FM today is Lee Lefebvre and he is the chief explainer and creator of Common Craft Video. That is a very special uh, video style and we will talk about uh, that style in this um, episode and Lee is also the keynote speaker of the Agile Day 2014 in New York City that is on the 18th of September in New York. Welcome to the podcast, Lee. It's great to be here, Joe. Thanks for having me. Lee, you're the author of The Art of Explanation. That is a book where you actually summarize your um, the history of how you created the Common Craft video style and uh, also you explain how these videos are being produced. And... Um, 15 million views so far, or more than that, uh, online views, that does not include on offline views, um, of those videos you guys have produced. When I say Lee, that is you and uh, your wife. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Common Craft is really a two-person company, and it's uh, since 2007, it's been uh, myself and my wife, Sachi. That is, uh, that is quite impressive, such a uh, hit list. So when we look at those videos, the Common Graph videos, which you can see on when you go like on a website like commongraph.com, <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, these videos, they look extremely casual, simple, straightforward, extremely powerful though, uh, but they are actually hard um, to be produced, right? So they take a few days. Could you just walk the listeners who are not familiar with that style through the production process and like the key elements of, of something like that? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we've, we've made, you know, uh, probably over 150 or so videos in the last few years, all with the same style that we call Common Craft Style. And um, I, I, thank you for saying those uh, nice things about the videos. I, I, I hope that people do feel that way, that they are, they are powerful. Uh, I feel like that that um, comes from a big focus on our side um, on writing, on actually thinking a lot about the script and then working to really create a matchup between the points we make in the script and the visuals so that they support one another. Mm -hmm. So every, every video project starts with um, – figuring out what, what video we're going to make and doing some research, maybe talking to some experts. Um, the members of commoncraft.com are that we give them a tool for suggesting and voting on video titles. So that's where a lot of the video ideas come from these days. Okay. Um, and we spend you know anywhere from a few days to a few weeks writing a script. We do that with Google Docs. It's a collaborative process between Sachi and I and sometimes content, um, you know, like technical experts. Um, and we usually shoot for around 500 words or less. I think we, we really like videos to be around two and a half minutes or so. So that's really closer to 400 words or 380 words or so. Um, once we feel good about the script, then we start thinking about uh, the visuals. And we do a couple of different versions of storyboards. Um, one are just sketches, and another version actually uses uh, some of the artwork that will actually appear in the final video. And uh, that can that can take anywhere from you know four or five days to a few weeks. Um, sometimes we have projects overlapping, so um, we don't often do one project all the way through at the same time. Hmm. Um, it, it kind of uh, is iterative, and, and uh, sometimes things get put on hold a little bit. But uh, there's always kind of something going on. Um, and then once we feel good about the storyboard. Um, then we start preparing for actually shooting the video. And I don't know that many people who watch the videos realize it, but the, the videos are actually live action stop motion video. There's very few digital elements actually happening in the video, and in most cases, no digital at all. Um, so we actually cut out pieces of paper, uh, colored pieces of paper, and um, move them on a real light on a real whiteboard um, and to create the the stop motion effect that uh, you know common craft style videos are known for um, I would say that a video uh, every video is different it's really a wide variety but we usually say you know 40 to 50 hours probably for a video wow that's uh, they, they look very simple they, they look very um, you know somebody has an idea wants to explain something but these videos are used now for 
um, you explaining your video series. So I think, I don't know if they have a name, but I could just call them In Plain English, the series. Uh, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, we call them, we just call them Common Craft videos or Common Craft style videos. Mm -hmm. And then they're also used for other uh, purposes. Um, what kind of things have you seen a little bit out of the ordinary, uh, what people do with Common Craft video style? <laughs> well, you know, something that's happening lately, which I think is, is interesting that we really love to see is, um, uh, you know, our biggest customers of our membership service is libraries, uh, school systems, teachers, people like that who use them to teach technology mainly in classrooms. And what these teachers have done is now started to um, make their own Common Craft style videos in classrooms. Uh, with students. So they use a basic, even an iPad or a smartphone and use really simple paper cutouts to uh, make a really short basic video about the Civil War or cell division or whatever it is. Um, and the kids, it's a great lesson for the kids because they not only learn about the subject, but they learn about making and sharing media. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you go to uh, YouTube and search for Common Craft Style on YouTube, you'll see you know over a thousand uh, videos that uh, these kids have and teachers have created in classrooms. And that's something that I really like to see. Wow, that is a, that's a very good example for for a good use, right? And they're learning also some basic techniques. It's still mm -hmm. some art. It's, uh, it's almost like an art project for yeah. them to get the uh, uh, the paper cut out. Is that something we have to picture your office before you start um, making those videos? When you think about what kind of elements you're going to use, is, are they like shoe boxes full of? <laughs> uh, of stencils and everything, or how does it look? No, I, actually, we we call the artwork cutouts because we actually do cut out pieces of paper in, in Common Craft videos. But um, we actually make them originally for every video. Uh, but we 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 have the the cutouts are all digitally saved digitally. Mm -hmm. They're um, these days I create each each piece of artwork on a Wacom tablet, and then um, and then the, those get. Uh, I, uh, those get colored. I mean, once the videos are, once the outline of the the artwork is done digitally, then I actually color them and get them made into. These days, we get get them made into vectors and raster graphics because um, the cutouts are actually part of Common Craft membership now. So people, we offer our members um, a library of over sixteen hundred images that they can use to make their own videos or do whatever they want with the uh, the cutouts. So these days, our our artwork starts with me doing. Um, you know, a digital drawing that's then colored and then re um, and then vectorized <laughs> and saved in a library. So now, when I make a video, I have a library of a lot of the images we've used in the past to pull from, uh, so I don't have to recreate the wheel, so to speak. Right. Uh, but um, every video, I would say, at least sixty percent of every video has uh, has you know a like artwork that was produced just for that video. Mm -hmm. Well, so somebody might listen to this podcast right now. Okay, so we're, we're designing digitally and then we're printing out and cutting out. Mm -hmm. Why not? What's the motivation? I mean, I've, I'm getting a feeling of it, but I want to just hear it from you. Mm -hmm. what is, what's your motivation of doing that extra step of not staying digital? Is there <laughs> not appropriate software out there to do that? Or? No, there, there definitely is. Um, it's a good question. And it's something that we've been thinking about a lot more lately. Um, I think that we started making Common Craft videos without a lot of perspective on what could be possible digitally. And it was 2007, so there, there weren't the tools that there are today. But nonetheless, it could still happen. Um, but I think that what we've done, what we did in the early days um, was responsible for Common Craft becoming what Common Craft has become, and um, I think it's it's something that I feel like we would lose something if we moved away from it now. That there's a, a quality to what we do that's inherent in the way that we do it, mm -hmm. and that's part of the craftsmanship, and that's part of the handcrafted feel of what we do. Um, an example of that is uh, in in every common craft video, to a greater or lesser degree, my hand appears multiple times. A finger comes in and points at something, and um, that gives it a human feel. It's like you're looking over someone's shoulder and they're pointing at something. And um, that's really hard to pull off digitally and for it to look real. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's a quality that's sort of sub, uh, you know, a little bit subconscious but for the viewer, but I, that I think actually helps with live action. Oh, absolutely. And is this also the reason why you're using a, a whiteboard as a, as a surface? Yeah, you know, that sort of came. Um, <laughs> The, the story of the whole thing started was I 
was wanting to explain RSS and some things that were happening in about 2006. And I started trying to be the person writing on a whiteboard and looking at the camera at the same time. And I got frustrated doing that and it wasn't working. And it was Sachi, my wife's idea, to put the whiteboard down on the floor or on, the, on a table and then point the camera down onto it and use nothing but hands and markers and pieces of paper. Um, so it sort of just evolved into using the whiteboard. It wasn't a really conscious decision. It was just evolved from what I was trying to do pre- pre- previously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw one of your videos, um, um, which actually produce, shows the production process. And uh, in one of them, you were actually wearing sunglasses at night. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, I know I'm not sure if you're familiar with that song from oh, yeah, the 1980s, yeah. but it looks like you're wearing sunglasses at night. Oh yeah, it, well, what what happened is we we've we've changed our process since then, but um, to get the colors right on the whiteboard and to make the the images pop really nicely on the whiteboard, we used really bright lights. It takes you know pretty bright lights, and we were using um, halogen lights, which were actually really hot, mm-hmm. um, and. Uh, so making, wearing sunglasses was actually an easier thing for me to do then. Um, since then, we've LEDs have come a long way. So now we're using um, LEDs, uh, and, and that doesn't have the heat or the intensity that the halogens did. So I, I don't wear the sunglasses anymore, but I did for a while. Okay. Are you good in drawing? That might be a question somebody uh, have. Can I uh, <laughs> produce these kind of videos only if I'm actually good in drawing? Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't think so. Um, I, I don't – I mean – I've always liked to draw and doodle, and I think I have some natural ability, but I don't think that that's required. Um, What's now sort of known as common craft style was not an intentional sort of uh, goal by us to create sort of a visual identity in that way. It was just my style of making what looked like a human to me but uh, didn't have the detail. And you know, since then, I've learned a lot more about that, and I think that stick figures – and figures like Common Craft uh, images that don't have facial features, don't even need really to have fingers, you know, maybe has a smile every once in a while, um, I think is actually really powerful and it's something that a lot of people can do. And the power, I think, comes from uh, this reduction of, of noise, right? I think that's a big part of all the Common Craft videos is there's nothing that appears on the whiteboard or in the scene that is not there for a reason. And... Um, I, I read a book a while back that I really recommend uh, called Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. Mm-hmm. Um, and in the book, he talks about how the more a face looks like a real human, the harder it is for uh, the audience to see themselves in that character. Mm. So by removing facial features, we allow the audience to, to empathize a little more and say, oh, that's me. Um, versus if they have a mustache, if they're a male or female or whatever, then then I think it it, it, make, it, it causes people to think, um, oh, that's that couldn't be me. I can't associate as closely with this with this character. Mm. Uh, so it's sort of a subtle point, but that that's how we look at what we do now. Is that we're we're trying to create these people that we're not. We don't want people to think, oh, am I attracted to this person or not, or what, right. whatever <laughs> you know, whatever your, wherever your mind goes. By by removing detail, by making it as simple as we can, I think we can focus on the idea, right. uh, which is the focus. Right. I think that that's a good point. Right. If the if the common craft video would be about a smile or fingers, if that would be the topic, um, those <laughs> those would need to be appear, right? So it's a reduction. Yeah. It's a reduction to what's essential in in the videos. Yep. Well, you have been producing these videos. I think, correct me if I'm wrong, since April 2007. That's right. And uh, you started with that uh, RSS uh, in plain English or explained. Yep. and uh, that was the that was the start of an of a movement and uh, where do you where do you see i mean this has been seven years and going mm-hmm. uh, mm-hmm. where do, where do you see this movement going and where do you see common graft going in the in the near future and maybe longer term yeah um it has been quite a journey i've really i've really um been fascinated to kind of uh be a, be a part of it uh, just very recently, some things have happened that I think are really interesting. Um, in the world of journalism, um, explainer news sites have started to appear. Uh, one is called Vox.com, which is run by a guy named Ezra Klein. Uh, another is called um, Newsbound. Uh, and New York Times just created an explainer um, site called The Upshot. Uh, I think th- this leads me to think that people are starting to realize that there is a role – 
in our world for people who focus on explanation as a skill. They become explainers, and and through that role, they use media, they use uh, good writing, they use visuals, they use you know all kinds of things with the goal of increasing understanding. And and I think that aside from our products or anything that we make or anything like I I, I our mission I think is to help people see the magic of helping people helping others understand something new. Mm-hmm. Like I think that is just an amazing feeling to be responsible for helping someone understand something that they didn't understand before. Mm-hmm. Whether that's in a video or an infographic or a, a story or whatever it is, um, this idea that explanation is this powerful thing that that you might be good at automatically or you might be able to develop a skill, um, to me that's that's what we're really trying to do. Um, and whether it's videos like we've already made or helping people make their own videos or even thinking outside of th- – thinking of things like what if you did an animated GIF that was five seconds long that related to an idea in five seconds that couldn't be done in any other, any other way? Like there's all kinds of formats you can use and, and that's something that um, I'm excited to do. Mm-hmm. Well, at the conference, you're going to keynote on the 18th of September in New York. Um, we will actually have a workshop um, in the afternoon where a person with the name Elizabeth Kramer, who uh, is, is a big fan of uh, Common Graph Video and uses, oh, yeah. and uses them uh, for her own explaining and uh, uh, of product owner work and so forth. We're actually producing a video, Common Graph Video, with some of the attendees who are interested in producing this video. Nice. And we'll, we'll show that video by the end of the day during our social hour. So we will see the end result in the spirit of Agile. Oh, that's awesome. That's great to hear. Maybe, I look forward to that. Maybe that's the first time you see uh, a video being produced in a conference. <laughs> in a <laughs> yeah. one-day conference. Maybe so. Maybe so. <laughs> um, you had um, this... There's one thing I wanted to clarify. It's about licensing your videos. I think that's also an element of your work. So you have mm-hmm. produced all these videos um, in the last seven years. Um, what kind of licensing model is is behind, and, and what's the purpose of that? Sure. Um, we, we've we've done a number of different licensing models over the years, but our, our our focus right now is doing it through a membership service. So Common Craft is uh, we have over sixty videos in our library. And when someone becomes a member, whether it's an organization or an individual, uh, they can have access to our complete library of videos. And then we give them tools for downloading the video file so they can take it and put it into a presentation or on their on their network at work. We also provide embed codes like a YouTube video so they can share that on public websites if they want or even private websites. It doesn't, doesn't matter as long as the embed codes um, you know, work with that platform. So that's really how the licensing work now is, is – Licensing works now is through uh, through that membership service. Um, something else is, that might be interesting too that we we did recently um, was we created a membership plan called the Editor Plan, where we actually allow our members to download video, download the videos, and then edit them to their own liking. So that means they could uh, take out a scene or add a scene or create a, a sort of pre-roll or post-roll or things like that. So that's kind of a a new thing for us is giving people. Uh, our videos as a starting point for their own projects. Mm-hmm. Can can people donate um, videos to your library? <laughs> you know, we're not currently doing that. Okay. Um, I think that most of the people that make videos they they want to put them on YouTube and and share them widely. And and, that, and YouTube is not something that we do. We we want our, our our website to be the home of our work. And and right now it's limited to Common Craft videos. Awesome. All right. So there's there's definitely a lot happening on your end uh, with that video. So I can only imagine you're busy. With the production process, new topics. <laughs> We're right. always doing always doing something for sure. Right, and then in addition to that, coming to New York and giving a keynote at the Agile Day, um, yeah, about the art of explanation. We're so looking forward to that. Uh, looking forward to having you in September 2014 yeah. in New York, and um, yeah, I want to thank you for uh, just uh, giving some of your thoughts around Common Craft Video and what it is to the listeners, and so people can get acquainted with the topic before they arrive to the uh, conference. That's great. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for having me, Joe. Lee, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Agile FM, the radio for the Agile community. I'm your host, Joe Krebs. If you're interested in more programming and additional podcasts, please go to www.agile.fm. Talk to you soon.